Hello everyone, welcome. So on the agenda for today, we are looking at Shirshasana, okay, headstand, how to do headstand um, in Iyengar Yoga. Um, yeah, it is, I will confess, it's one of my most favorite asanas. I love Shirshasana and it's um, also a pose which can be intimidating for, for students and, you know, understandably. But I think we can go through some, some various stages and some good preparatory types of poses that will give you confidence, you know, confidence that you can approach the asana, the pose with confidence and, um, you know, safely and be able to gauge for yourself whether it's, it's appropriate at this time, at this time in your practice. So the focus today, the way that we're gonna approach it is we'll do a little practice of poses that are not headstand that will prepare you for headstand. Okay, that's how we're gonna start. And we're really gonna look at the middle of the upper back, that thoracic spine uh, between the shoulder blades and how to sort of penetrate into that area um, because that that is an area that will you know if you've got the the strength there as well as the mobility you need a little bit of both um, will give you confidence when you go upside down and stand on your head so we're going to do that and then we're going to look at a few options for sheer shasana how to support yourself with props and how to go up independently now a uh, couple things i just want to say just to preface this practice one thing is i have another video in uh, on my youtube channel that you might want to check out if this is like absolutely your first time doing sheer shasana in that practice you know i show how to sort of kick the legs up and how to use the wall and you know and also some different preparatory type poses okay if you haven't checked that one out i encourage you to do so this practice we're going to focus a little more on nuance so it's still absolutely for beginners but we're going to focus on having a little more control both on the way up and eventually on the way down um, as well all right enough of that Let's begin. Hey there. If you have a cranky back, stiff neck, if you're overweight, anxious, or if you simply don't look, feel, or resonate with the images of yoga on social media, you will definitely want to check out my online course, Ayangar Yoga Fundamentals. Okay, we're going to start in Admukha Virasna. So begin with big toes touching, knees slightly apart. And if you have two bricks, okay, have them within reach. Sit on your heels, exhale, come forward. Okay, then holding your bricks, reach your arms as far forward here as you can. Now remember, our intention is to start penetrating into the upper back. So particularly if you're flexible, just be mindful that you're not overdoing, for example, the lower back. I don't know if you can see that. See, lower back, this is just sinking. So to prevent that, press the tops of your feet down, your ankles down, your shins down, and reach your hip corners back and roll the buttocks down. Then with that as an anchor, extend forward crawl those fingers more. Okay, just lift your head slightly. Just look a little forward. Externally rotate your upper arms and then pull yourself forward. Buttocks down from the front body, extend. Okay, and then lower your head to a neutral position. Breathe here. From the corners of your hips, reach back and then extend forward, eject the side waist forward, side ribs forward, side chest forward, and breathe here. Inhale, exhale. As you inhale, maximize the length, and as you exhale, receive your shoulder blades more strongly onto the body. 
Admoka Virasna. Okay, and then release slowly. Bring your arms closer and sit yourself upright. From here, let's go next to Admukha Svanasana. Okay, so you can come forward, plant your palms. And now from here, tuck your toes under and lift up Admukha Svanasana. Now, as soon as you lift yourself up, you want to adjust your feet so that you end up on the back of your toe mounts. Lift back of the toe mounts and then push from the arm side towards the leg side, okay? Raise your head up, rotate your upper arms and now push the floor down, reach your hip corners up and press those thighs back. Admukha Svanasana. Can you still, now that the hamstrings are sort of into the equation here, can you still penetrate that upper back to the same degree that we had in the Admukha Virasana. Okay, press on your inner hand, thumb and index finger side there, but in opposition to that, rotate your upper arms out. Push the floor down, lift your hips up, move your thighs back. And then release, bend your knees and pause here. Okay, let's go again for Admukha Svanasana. Okay, plant your palms and then tuck your toes under, lift yourself up and back. Right away, adjust your legs, come to the back of the toe mounds and now rotate your upper arms out, push the floor, reach your hips up and back and then press those thighs back. Admukha Svanasana. Okay, be in your pose here. Lift your kneecaps up, thighs up, and move those thighs back more and more. More and more. Lengthen your side trunk as you do that. Okay, now from here you're going to take Uttanasana. Okay, so walk your feet forward. Okay, come forward, walk your feet forward, take nice space between your legs. So you can even go here as wide as the mat. Okay, I think Banjo is blocking me, but <laughs> have my feet at the very outside edges of the mat. And then exhale, come forward and hold. Let's see here if I can give you a better view. Hold the sides of your ankles and then bend the elbows to the side, reach your elbows forward and lengthen yourself down your legs. Let go through the back of your neck. Okay, from the back of your knees down to your heels, descend, back of your knees to your buttock bones, lift up and then roll the buttocks over, over, over. Let the whole side body drop down. Okay, leg go through the back of your neck and breathe. Okay, equalize the touch underneath your right leg and left leg. And again, let go of any tension through the back of your neck. Part of what we're doing here, we're preparing the body, but you're also preparing to go upside down. So before we put all the weight, the full weight of uh, shirshasana, right, of the whole body when you're upside down, we're going in a more gradual way. Admugashvanasana, then Uttanasana. Okay, and now let's come back up. So walk your hands forward, straighten your arms, and now come to the concave back position, Ardha Uttanasana. Lift your kneecaps, lift your thighs, straighten your legs. Now rotate your upper arms out, slide your shoulders away from your neck and reach your breastbone forward. Stand firmly on your legs, press those heels. Now take one hand to your hip, other hand to your hip, wrap those elbows back and with a lifted chest, come back up. Okay, carefully walk your feet together and stand in. Tadasan. Okay, 
Let's actually now go back to Admo Svanasana. And this time, I want you to adjust yourself so that you can take a grip here on the front of your mat, like this. So do keep your, your arms as wide as, your, as, your, as you are, like so. Grip the mat, and you're gonna pull the mat forward, okay? And then be almost like, it's almost like a modified Admukha Virasana, okay? So I want you to reach those hips back, okay? Tuck the toes under like this, and then instead of having your hips over your knees, take them maybe halfway back towards Admukha Virasana. So it's not all the way back, it's not fully back, but just maybe halfway, okay? And now pull on the rubber, and like you're almost like you're trying to lift, um, to pull the rubber out from under you, okay? Pull it forward. Rotate your upper arms externally, turn them from inside out, and pull the rubber forward. Now, as much as you're pulling the rubber forward, reach those hip corners back. So see, can you create a dialogue from the wrist, not to the armpit, but all the way to the hip corner there, right? Extend back. All right, now, from here, maintain this, and now just lift your knees two inches or so off the ground and hover there, hover there. Now look at the mat and see where your armpits are over, like what part of the mat the armpits are over. Okay, now do not let your armpits come forward. Roll your buttocks up, 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 and slowly start to transition here. Admukha Svanasana. Admukha Svanasana. Pull the rubber forward, lift your hips up and back, move your thighs back and then release, okay? Pause here. Okay, so what tends to happen for people, and you can see whether this lands for you, if you can relate to this or not, but a lot of times you'll be in this position, you've got your toes tucked under, you're reaching back, and then as soon as you lift your knees off the ground, the weight of the pose does something like this, where the shoulders come forward, armpits come forward. So what I'm suggesting here, and you know, you can even, if you wanna work it out, you can even make a, a line for yourself on your mat, put down a strap, it'll make just some kind of uh, marker, and you just adjust it so that it's, your armpits, when you're in position, are hovering over it, like so. And then see, when you lift up, are you coming forward? Okay, insist that you don't. Hips back, hips back. And this way of getting into Admukha Svanasana is gonna insist that that thoracic spine penetrates. Okay, try it again. Admukha Svanasana, lifting up from, like, a, it's not quite Admukha Virasana, but some kind of modified, situation there. Okay, go for it. Hold the front side of the mat there, rotate your upper arms out, and then have the toes already tucked so that the, you know you're not super heavy there on the leg side. And then hips back, hips back, create the dialogue, rotate your upper arms outward, and also make sure that your knees are not too close to your, to your hands, right? You can have them back a little bit, otherwise when you lift up, your dog pose will be really short, okay? Up and back, up and back, hover. Take a second in that hovering position, pull the rubber out from under you, and then maintain, maintain that positioning of your arms, of your shoulders, as you unfold the lower legs into your Advoka Svanasana. Penetrate that upper back from back to front. And then release. Lower down, take a moment and breathe. Okay, you're welcome to repeat this a couple more times as you wish. 
I'm gonna go on, uh, you know, you can pause, what have you. I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna show you another way that you can work with it with the same intention of really getting into the middle of the upper back. Okay, now this next approach to Admo Kushvanasana, you're going to place your thumbs right together like this. This is the arm position for this Admo Kushvanasana. So getting into the pose is a little bit unusual. Okay, match the thumbs and then bend your elbows, stick your head inside, rotate those upper arms out and squeeze the back of your head. Okay, from here, tuck the toes under, lift your knees up, roll the buttocks up a little bit. Now push the floor with your hands and move those thighs back. Push the floor with your hands, lift your hips up, move your thighs back more. Okay, now again, rotate your upper arms from inside out, squeeze the back of your head, Admukha Svanasana. And then release, come down, Pause here. You can even rest for a moment. Advoka Virasna. If you want to give the shoulders a bit of a rest, you can turn your palms back. Reach your palms back, palms facing upward. And this will give a nice spread and kind of a release here in the upper back. Okay, take a few breaths here. And then we'll go for our last round. Okay, Admukha Svanasana, thumbs together, last attempt. Bend the elbows, stick your head inside, and squeeze the back of your head. Make sure those upper arms are turning. Tuck the toes under, and lift yourself up. You're still adjusting the weight here to the back of your toe mounds, right? Because you want the weight in the legs. And then be here, be in your Admukha Svanasana. You've done it a few times here, you know the drill. Rotate your upper arms out, push the floor down, careful not to sink in the lumbar, right? Like don't overdo, but find the length from the hips up, 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 up and back. And then move the thighs back, descend the heels best as you can, Admukha Svanasana. And then release, undo yourself, and again, recover. Okay, for this next presentation, I've got a few props, um, a chair at the wall, and then sometimes I put this blanket on top here, sometimes not. It's, it may depend a little bit on how precious your walls are. Um, but I put a little, I put the, excuse me, I put the blanket over the chair so that it, won't move when your weight is against it, okay? And then I've got myself a rolled mat. So you wanna roll it nice and tight and it's gonna sit here like this, okay? Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your Shirshasana hand position, okay? So you interlace your fingers right down to the webbing like this and you can just kind of have your thumbs soft wherever, wherever they end up. And you're gonna do this around the, the rolled mat here like this, okay? Now, this yellow mat happens to be relatively thick, so I don't feel I need any extra padding, but if your mat is not thick, you're welcome to open up a blanket if you feel that's a little bit hard on the top of your head. You can also fold your mat in half, right? So that your head is in half or even in four and just make sure that, um, you know, it feels okay on the crown of your head. All right, this is what it's gonna look like. You'll probably make more sense once you see it. You're like this and you just interlace your fingers around this rolled mat and then see that your elbows are more or less in line with your shoulders okay so for example if they're way out here then it's not under my shoulders i want to turn the upper arm 
from inside out as we've been doing and just stack the shoulder over the elbow there. Okay, then I keep my head up. I don't immediately put it down on the ground. I keep the head up, press my forearms down, lift my knees up, and then I start to walk in. And as I walk in, I lower my head, like I just let it fall. Walk in, walk in, walk in, and only at the very last minute do I drop it. And even if, you know, it doesn't touch the ground, like the ground just feels too far away, then let it hover for this, for this presentation, okay? And then you're here like this. This is what it looks like, okay? So go ahead, set that up, be in your position, and then once you're there, press your forearms strongly down, lift your shoulders up, and climb your back body up this roller. Okay, now if your hamstrings are tight, bend your knees. Keep your legs nice and wide and walk in with knees bent. Okay, if you're able to straighten, then roll your buttocks up, 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 and see if you can get as much of your back body to touch that roller as possible. Okay, because the idea here is you want the hips to come over when you kick up, right? If the hips stay towards the feet, it's gonna be really heavy. Now lift the hips up, 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 and over. Okay, and then slowly release, come down, and pause. Okay, what I really like about this presentation is that it gives feedback, okay? Your whole spine there has something, a reference, if it's touching the roller, then it gives you some, some touch feedback. And if it's not touching the roller, it also gives you feedback because you know you're aiming towards something. Okay, now there's many different ways to kind of work with this idea, right? I know uh, there's a number of different block setups working with the bricks. You can use two bricks, three bricks, five bricks. There's also four bricks. There's all sorts of different setups that we can do. But I, I actually thought that this was more simple, okay? So if you have a chair, you have a second mat, um, it's relatively simple and it gives really, uh, it gives solid feedback, solid feedback. If you wanna see the brick setups as well, uh, let me know in the comments. I will happily do another video showing brick setups for Salamba Shirshasna. Okay, let's do this again and we'll take it one step further, okay? And as you're working in your shear chest, when you cross your fingers, right? It's good habit, it's good form to just change it up, right? So if you naturally cross with the right index finger on top, left one on the left small finger on the bottom, just take it down a notch for the second round and change, okay? All right. And did you see what I just did there? Because if I have this too angular, it's not gonna work. So it might be angular while it's just resting there, but then you have to shift it so that the mat is fully upright, okay? Then once you're in position here, again, externally rotate your upper arms and press those forearms down. Okay, keep your neck sort of neutral and then lift your knees and hips up. Press your forearms down, lift your shoulders away from your neck, and then slowly walk in, walk in. Roll the buttocks up and over, walk in, let the back of your neck go, so the back of the head will start to touch the roller, and then you can lower the crown of your head to the ground, but lift those shoulders up, lift those shoulders up. And now press the forearms down and climb your back body up the roller, up the roller, okay? Again, those of you who are wrestling a little bit with the hamstrings, bend the knees, walk in with your knees bent until, work it at least, until you can get the back touching, okay? That's the challenge, that's the idea. Maybe not on the first go, but see if you can work at it, okay? And then join your legs and now see, can you raise one leg up, a kapata? Reach into that heel. Lift your shoulders, lift the leg. Hold it. Press those arms down, lift your shoulders, extend into the lifted leg, and then lower it down. Okay, again, press your forearms down, lift your shoulders up. 
Raise your second leg. Lift the leg, lift the shoulders. Press your elbows. Reach into that lifted leg. Hold it. Lower the leg down. And then slowly release. Okay, and again, you can recover Admukha Virasana. Okay, this is a nice, nice way to work. I mean, you may want to spend some time with this being your Shirshasana, okay? Until you build up the strength, until you can walk in, walk in, walk in with relative ease, there should be no discomfort, okay, in the neck. Really, really, it should feel absolutely fine. Okay, press those arms down, lift the shoulders. Um, yeah, okay. Shall we move on? Okay, the next thing I wanna show you is another way to use the chair, and this time for a fully supported Shirshasana, going up the whole deal, okay? So this one, you're gonna take your chair, and I've only ever done this one using so-called yoga chair. Um, so it's a folding chair and there's no, there's no back here. Okay, it's basically a recreation of um, like using a, a simhasan bench, which we use in Iyengar yoga. So it's, you know, if you don't have some of those fancy wooden props, um, this, is, this is like an, an alternate and I, I find it's really effective. Okay, so it's a bit involved. You're gonna take your chair and you're gonna turn it upside down like this. Okay, so this chair back here is down, all right? My chair has one bar here, it's, at, it's facing me, but some chairs have two bars, both will work like this. And then again, you wanna be at the wall, bring it so it's touching the wall here. And then you'll take one blanket and place the blanket on the chair seat. Okay, a lot of times people will place the bar up on the bar, but that is not where you need it. You need it on the chair seat. Okay, then we're gonna lift the height of this whole setup so you can use a brick. Foam block, I use a foam block, but you, I've also used a wooden brick, both are good. And you're just gonna lift the whole thing up like this. And it's important, Andrew, I hope you can see, I put as little of the brick on this inside spot as possible. It's literally just lifting it, okay? And then this second blanket, you're gonna maneuver it so that it's underneath here and just provides a little bit of softness for your head, like so, okay? Yeah, that's the setup. All right, so now watch what happens, okay? This area is gonna support that thoracic spine, which we've been working on, working on throughout this whole practice, okay? So you're gonna interlace your fingers, and now the classical positioning for headstand, which I believe I go over in quite a lot of detail in that other video, so please, that I referenced before, so you can please check it out. Um, but just a quick review, you're interlacing your hands right down to the webbing, cross the thumbs, and when you place your head in your hands, it looks like this, right? So the, this part of the thumb here is touching your hands, and as a beginner, if you're new, you can sort of stop there, okay? As you evolve with your headstand, you may find that the hands kind of open up a little more and you really embrace your head with your hands, that would be more of the classical way to do it. Um, both are good, but I do find when you're first learning to keep a little bit, just more emphasis on this spot here, pushing into the back of the head will make you feel a little more stable, okay? All right, so this is what it looks like. You place yourself inside here and you interlace your fingers right down to the webbing and press down. Okay, then let your neck be free. Just let it hang down there. Rotate your upper arms and catch the outer elbow skin. Now what's so lovely about this presentation is that the chair frame provides literally a frame for your pose. So your elbows are not able to slide out. There's some resistance built into the setup. 
Okay, press those forearms down, lift your shoulders away from your neck, and now lift your knees and hips up. And as you did in the last presentation, walk in, walk in until your shoulders there touch the frame, touch that crossbar, and then, or excuse me, the chair seat. And then lower your head down and roll your hands into your head. Okay, now this is, this is beautiful just as is. So again, if you're needing to take this a bit slower, go in stages, you can absolutely work here and do the same work that we did using that rolled mat. Okay, press the forearms down, lift your shoulders, walk in, learn how to get the hips really high. You can play around with lifting one leg up, other leg up, Okay, and then if you're ready, you raise one leg up and kick. And then bend the knees and immediately find the wall. Immediately find the wall, yeah. And then press your feet into the wall, roll the buttocks up, keep the thighs rolling in. Yeah, that's it. And then press your forearms down, lift the shoulders again. You can come to the tips of the toes and then you can even start to work on balance here. And just having this chair, just touching you, doesn't need to feel like it's penetrating, but just a little touch of that thoracic area, um, that, that line, that horizontal line by the shoulder blades, it really, really helps, okay? Forearms down, shoulders up, reach into your legs. Okay, anytime you need it, the wall is there. And when you're ready to come down, lift the shoulders again, and then one leg, and then the other leg just follows. Okay, and then come down. Don't pop your head right up immediately after your Shirshasana, but stay down for a moment, Admukha Virasana, just recover yourself, recalibrate. And then slowly come back up. Okay? Let's go again. Try it again. And keep uh, changing the crossing of your fingers. Okay? Get right in there. Now, I will say for some people, this setup, this chair frame is just simply too narrow. Okay? And this is the the give and take with props, right? The bodies come in all shapes and sizes, props are one size, so we need to learn how to gauge whether these setups are appropriate for us and whether the props are the right, the right size for us, right? So keep that in mind. If you're feeling too um, compressed in here, then maybe it's not the right setup for you, okay? And we can explore something different. But um, for those people for whom the proportions are right, and it does work for a lot of bodies. So, you know, I have uh, seen this effectively for people who are shorter, taller, you know, um, it's, it's quite beloved by a lot of people. Okay, interlace, change that crossing, get right in there, rotate your upper arms, lift the shoulders. And remember, you're not putting the head down right away, but lift the shoulders first. Okay, and you have to get the, the wrists under there. Okay, now lift your knees up, lift your hips up, and then walk in, walk in, walk in, and then keeping the shoulders lifted, lower your head down, lower your head down. Okay, press your forearms down again, get weight into the elbows as well, and now here's a little nuance for you. From the underside of your wrist, lengthen towards the small finger, right? You wanna lengthen the underside of the wrist and then roll your hands even more into your head. Yeah, see what that does. Okay, then walk in, walk in, raise one leg up, yeah, and then bend the leg that's on the ground and jump. Okay, bend both legs, drop your feet to the wall, be there for a moment, roll the buttocks up, yeah, lift those shoulders, and then you can be on the tips of the toes, join the legs, one leg up, other leg up, Salamba Shirshasana. Go back to your base, press your forearms down, lift your shoulder blades up. Okay, turn the front of the thighs in, back of the thighs open, and then ascend from your outer legs, lift. So 
outer hips to ankle bones lift up. Then from your inner groins to your inner heels, lift up. Move the mid buttock instead of being, you know, something like this, mid buttock into the body and move the thighs back. Okay, maintain the lift in your shoulders and then you can, so you can come right down from this position or if you're just learning, I would maybe go to the wall first, just have that kind of touch point and then lower one leg, let the other leg follow and again come into your Admukha Virasana and recover. Okay, we're moving into unsupported. Shirshasana, unsupported Shirshasana, go on for headstand. So typically for headstand, I take my mat, I fold it in half, I fold it in four, and that's the foundation of my pose. The way that I'm gonna teach it today, I would suggest that you're either gonna do the pose right at the wall, and so your mat is gonna be like this, okay? Or you're gonna take your mat and basically, you know, about this distance, about the distance of a four folded mat, you're gonna bring it away from the wall, okay? There is a tendency to sort of be like, I wanna come away from the wall, but I wanna come just a little bit away from the wall. It's actually um, safer to come about a shin distance or so away from the wall, because if you're gonna go roly poly, you're not gonna fall into the wall. You have some space around you, okay? Now, you know, I, I don't think you're gonna go roly poly, but um, you do wanna create um, a safe environment so that we have options. Okay, so this is what's gonna happen. Interlace your fingers, force your shasna right down to the webbing, create that nice firm connection. And you've got this um, cup shape here between your fingers. So what you're not doing is squeezing like this. You wanna keep space because your head goes in there. Okay, and then I always align my knuckles with the very far edge here of the mat. And then just as we have been doing, you don't have the benefit of the chair, you know, as the outer frame, but you want to keep that same type of alignment. So lift the elbow, externally rotate the upper arm and catch the outer elbow skin as you lay it down. Do both sides and then just see that your elbows are directly under your shoulders, more or less. Okay, too narrow is not that good, too wide is not that good. All right, and then press your forearms down. Now that one instruction I gave you previously was right here to lengthen, right? So you can do this now like this, right? Roll your hands towards you and just lengthen the underside of your wrist and then lay it back down again. And that just creates a really nice firm connection at the base. Okay, now keep looking at your palms, tuck your toes under, and lift your knees and hips up. Now all the work we've done on that thoracic spine, don't let it be heavy. Push up and back, up and back. And then walk in, walk in. You can still walk in with bent knees if that's more available to you, not a problem. Walk in, walk in, walk in, and at the last minute, right, neck is free, but just when your hips are as high up as you can get them, then lower your head down, and now roll your hands into your head even more. Press those forearms down, lift your shoulders up, hips up as well. Okay, now walk in, walk in, walk in, and then just raise one leg towards you and hug the knee in towards your chest. Hug it in, hug it in, hug it in. Lower it down. Other leg towards you, heel towards your buttock, knee towards your chest, and see, can you come to the tip, 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 tip of the toes that are on the ground? And then down, okay? And this is what I want you to practice. Do it a few times. Tip of the toes, one leg, hug it in, hug it in, hug it in. Come to the very tip of the toes of the foot that's on the floor and then change. Hug it in, hug it in. So it's the heel is coming towards the buttock, but the knee is also coming towards your chest. Hug it in, hug it in. And then see, can you lift the other leg up? 
and then come down. Okay, that's, this is Shirshasana, and you're coming up with control. Okay, so again, this other video that I referenced, when you're, you know, really learning, I, mean, I think I put you in a corner, you haul one leg up, throw it up. That's just to get a taste, a flavor, well, what is headstand? Okay, and it's fun, and it's fully, <laughs> do it, it's worthwhile, it's really good. But eventually, you, it's not just about getting up there or being up there. It's about getting there and having the control, the containment, the composure, both on the way up and on the way down. Okay, now you can do this right at the wall. I understand it may be, um, there may be some fear starting that far from the wall. You can do it at the wall, but there is, the hips need to go back. So just be mindful um, and see if it works for you, depending on your structure, whether the, the hips will, will hit the wall or not, okay? Change the crossing of your fingers and go for another round. Build the, the foundation as we've been doing. Walk in, walk in, walk in, head down, and then roll your hands into your head. Okay, Re embrace your head with your hands. And now, walk in, one leg. Heel to the buttocks, knee to the chest, and then back. See, my back is kind of touching the wall, which is okay. And then other leg comes in, and then down. Okay, now, you want to see that the entire time you're working that the shoulders are not collapsing. Press those forearms down, lift your shoulders up, and just work on this first stage of getting the feet off the floor. Okay, so go ahead, continue to work on it. I'll show you what it looks like to get the legs all the way up, and when you're ready, you can, you know, you can add that in. Okay, so at the wall, it'll look like this, and they're, they're both a little different. I really, really encourage you to work a shin distance away from the wall for this variation, but I will show it here as well. Okay, so you're one leg in, other leg in, and then like this, feet to the wall, scrub the heels up. Then once the heels are touching the wall, move the buttocks away from the wall. Okay, so it's not hanging back. Buttocks away from the wall. Lift the shoulders, scrub the heels up. Remember the touch of that chair, of that rolled mat into your upper back and you maintain that. And then eventually you can go ahead and come off the wall as well. Okay, now on the way back, I want you to come back the way you went in. Okay, so bend the knees. And now here, can you bring both knees to your chest? Hug them in, hug them in, hug them in. And then unfold. Okay, recover, Admoka Virasana. Okay, last variation that I'll show you here is again, a little bit away from the wall about the, I use this size of the fourfold as a gauge, um, but again, it's about that shin distance away from the wall, okay? Align your fingers, your knuckles at this far edge, otherwise the measurement doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then externally rotate your upper arms, get that good alignment, lengthen the underside of your wrists and firmly press down. Okay, knees up, hips up, walk in, and then head down. And receive your head into your hands. Okay, hips up, hips up, hips up, one leg in. Hug it in, other leg in. Okay, now from here, drop the heels to the buttocks and lift your knees up to the ceiling. Lift those shoulders. Press your forearms down, lift your shoulders, extend your thighs towards your knees, and then unfold the lower legs, right? This is going to teach you balance in your Shirshasana. Then keep the lift in your shoulders, drop the heels towards your buttocks, shoulders up, lift them, knees to your chest, hug it in, hug it in, hug it in and with absolute control. Come down and recover. Okay, 
So in the Iyengar Yoga Method, we always balance our work in Shirshasana with work in Sarvangasana. So we think of the poses as categories. There's families of asanas and there's several asanas, several poses that fall into the shoulder stand family. Um, the kind of guiding principle is however long you spend in your headstand, you should also spend in your shoulder stand family pose. Okay, and that's just the balance. And then the other thing too, I'll mention just while I have your attention is that in Iyengar yoga, we will always do headstand before shoulder stand. It doesn't need to be directly before, but it will become, it will come earlier in the practice. Yeah. Okay. So let's end the practice with Setu Bandha Sarvangasana today. And I'm going to show a setup like this where you use a vertical bolster, have a brick and also have a strap. Okay, and then what you'll do is you'll sit on the edge of the bolster here and then place the strap around your arches and you can separate the legs. So, you know, the, the width is kind of up to you. I know that my, my back gets a little cranky if my legs are too narrow, so I do like to be generous with the width, but you can work out what feels right for you. Then have the brick within reach, but we're not gonna use it just yet, okay? Sit on the front edge, lift your chest, lengthen yourself back, and first just let the back of your head there touch down, okay? Then once you're down, you can push your feet into the floor and then slide yourself back. And as you slide back, roll those shoulders under, 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 bring your chin towards your chest and get the shoulders to absolutely touch down. Okay, they have to be touching for Sarvangasana. Okay, then reach for your brick. Okay, and then you're going to lift your hips up and place that brick under your sacrum. Okay, and you still want those shoulders to be touching down. So there may be a bit of kind of finessing to get everything right. Then extend your legs to straight. Press your knees down and release your arms. This is my finessing here. Yeah. Okay, the strap here is just giving you a little bit of a container for your legs, but inside the strap, you press your knees down, thighs down, receive the shape in your chest and just let go through your arms. With each exhalation, let your abdomen soften and breathe. Okay, now stay, be here. If you're not happy in this pose, right? If the back is bothering you, you can always bend your knees. Just take the chest action. That's one option. You're welcome to see if maybe it's better for you without the extra height underneath your sacrum. You can sort of explore, see how that feels. Okay, please don't suffer through. But whichever one you've chosen, just stay with it for a bit. Okay, breathe, inhale, exhale. And just let yourself settle after this practice. Okay, that brings us to the end of this practice. Thank you so much, and I look forward to practicing you with you again.